Now let's talk about independent samples versus paired samples, because from here on out, we're totally going to be dealing with paired samples. It would help to know what, what the heck those are, right? So independent samples, the scores are derived separately from each other. For instance, they came from separate people, separate schools, separate, um, separate petri dishes, right? So the samples are independent from each other. My, my getting of this sample had nothing to do with my getting of this other sample. Independent, another word for paired, right? Independent or paired samples, the scores are linked in some way. For instance, um, they're linked by the same person, right? So um, my score on the math test and my score on the English test, right? They're linked because they both come from me. Um, maybe married couple, maybe you ask one married couple, um, how many children would you like, you ask one spouse, how many children would you like to have, and you ask the other spouse, how many children would you like to have, right? So in that way, although they come from different people, there's, these scores are linked because they come from the same married couple. Or another thing might be a pre or, and post test of a class, right? So maybe a statistics class might do a pre and post test. Um, so maybe 10 different statistics classes from all over the United States um, get picked to do a pre and post test. And, um, and those tests are linked because the same class did the first test and the second test, right? And 10 different classes did the pairs, right? So in that way, they're paired samples, right? So it's not just a hodgepodge of pretest scores and a hodgepodge of post-test scores. It's more like a neat line where the pretest scores for this guy, uh, for this class, is lined up with the pretest scores for that class, right? And they're all lined up next to each other. Okay. So now that you know the sort of technical definitions, let's see if we could pick them out. So which of these is which? So the test scores from Professor X's class versus test scores from Professor's y, Professor Y's class. Well, these count as independent samples because they just come from different classes. They're not, each score is not linked in, in any particular way. River samples from eight feet deep versus 16 feet deep. Well, um, this also doesn't really seem like paired samples, unless they went through some, some procedure to make sure it's the same spot in the river. But barring that, it's probably an independent sample. Male heights versus female heights. They're just a jumble of heights over here and a jumble of heights over here. They're not like matched to each other. So I would say independent samples. Left-hand span versus right-hand span. Well, in this case, they, they usually these two spans come from the same person. It's not a hodgepodge here and a hodgepodge here. It's like left hand, right hand from person one, left hand, right hand from person two, left hand, right hand from person three. So I would say this is a paired sample. Productive vocabulary of two-year-old infants who have been raised by bilingual parents versus monolingual parents. Again, I would say it's a bunch of scores here and a bunch of scores here. They're not lined up in any way. So I would say independent. Productive vocabulary of identical twins. Twin one, twin two, twin one, twin two, twin one, twin two. Here we see paired samples. Scores on an eye gaze task by autistic individuals and age match controls. So autistic individuals often have trouble with eye gaze, um, but in order to know that, you would have to match them with um, with people who are the same age who are not autistic, right? And so here, we have autistic individuals lined up with somebody who's their same age who's not autistic, right? So there are these nice even pairs, and each pair has uh, eye, gaze, eye gaze scores, right? And so I would say these are paired samples. So hopefully that gives you a better idea of some examples of paired samples.